Haddock is such a versatile fish and it's plentiful too. And for this recipe, I'm gonna show you curried haddock tacos with a lovely tomato salsa. So this is what the haddock looks like. It's a round fish, so it means there's two fillets on either side. It has a line going down it on the skin and then kind of like a thumbprint. So you'll get your fishmonger to fillet it, to pin bone it, and have it all ready just that you can do this recipe. You can pan fry it. You, you can make fish and chips from it. You can bake it. It's so versatile. You can make so many recipes. So don't worry, I'm not going to show you how to fillet it, but I just wanted to show you how, what it looks like. So we get our fish from Killy Beggs from Albatross Seafoods. So he, uh, John, is, is based up there. He got me some beautiful fresh haddock. And all I've done is cut it into roughly what's that about an inch and a half so there's no um there's no bones the skin is on it which i really like and we're going to make a lovely kind of like a crumb for this so we are so i have some just breadcrumbs uh, just literally blitzed if you have a bread a couple of days old blitz them in the food processor but we're going to jazz them up and we're going to put in some curry powder so this is a lovely irish company called oco so we're going to put in a couple of spoonfuls of this curry powder here and it's gonna work really well with the haddock and then some sesame seeds, love sesame seeds. Now I'm gonna put in about maybe three spoonfuls of this. Sure, maybe one more for luck, that's four. Okay, so that's gonna give lovely texture. Now, you don't have to use the sesame seeds, but I think they add great texture, flavor, and they're delicious. I'm gonna put in some lemon zest because I think lemon works so well with fish. Now you can use some uh, lime, which I'm gonna use for my salsa. Don't worry, I'm not going to start dancing. Uh, so we're just going to grate this, watch the fingers, and that's going to go in there. So that's going to give lovely freshness. So these breadcrumbs that I'm making here, you can make ahead and they'll keep in your fridge so they will happily for about four to five days or you can freeze them. Great way of using up some um, if you've leftover bread. So I'm going to show you just the technique of just chopping some herbs. Um, I'm using some flat leaf parsley and I'm just going to curve my fingers and we're just going to, with the big chef's knife, we're going to rock this over and back. Now we want to get it nice and fine for our breadcrumbs. So just to recap, in the bowl we have some breadcrumbs, we have some sesame seeds, some lemon zest and some curry powder. And this is like, a, I'm making some lovely curried haddock tacos but you can have these as fish fingers. So great for your kids. And when I love serving with kind of like haddock, kind of like goujons you can call it, or fish fingers, is some mushy peas. So some peas cooked with a little bit of cream, frozen peas that is, and a little bit of mint works really well, and a tiny wee bit of butter, and it's delicious. So that's our breadcrumbs there, and they will keep, and you can freeze them. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you the technique of panning them, which means flour, egg, and breadcrumb. And you can do this with a full fillet of haddock if it's pin boned with the skin on uh, and then you can bake it off in the oven. So say you want to kind of like a healthy version of fish and chips rather than deep frying it or pan frying it, you can bake it off in the oven, no problem at all. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is light my pan. I'm going to use some nice Irish rapeseed oil. I'm a big fan of using as many Irish producers as possible. But for me, it's about eating more fish. We're an island and, you know, when I go around and I visit a lot of fishermen, I always ask them, what's your favourite fish? So many of them say to me, they absolutely adore and enjoy haddock. So it's a plentiful fish, it's full of flavor, and it's really, really, it's not a strong taste in fish either for your children. You know, I think that's really important. Our twins, Conor and Lucia, they're eight now and they adore fish. So this is plain flour, one egg, a little bit of milk, so I'm using a quality assured uh, eggs. And then what we're gonna do is dip it in flour and then into the egg, egg wash, egg and milk. So we're gonna just, and then into the crumbs. It's as easy as this, and this can be done a day or two ahead, and then you just keep these in the fridge, or you can freeze them so you can make them ahead. And that's the beautiful thing about, you know, doing something like this. It's all about preparation, getting your lovely fresh haddock fillets. And then what you can do is just literally keep them in your fridge, crumb them, cook them, enjoy them, and you can also freeze them. Now, so I'm gonna keep this hand uh, dry, and this hand is going into the egg. So what does the flour does? It helps the egg wash stick and it seals in all the flavor. Now, if you wanted to, you can remove the skin, but trust me, I don't. I just think it gives great flavor. There's no scales on it. And that's what we have there. A lovely little kind of, you could call it a homemade fish finger. So see the way I'm keeping one hand, so dry and one hand in the egg wash, and then we need to wash our hands after this. So 
This is what you call panne, flour, egg, and breadcrumbs. And into the breadcrumbs, we've jazzed them up. You could use some chili powder. So it's a really versatile fish that can take on lots of flavors. I always like the sesame seeds and breadcrumbs, and that's just a personal thing. So if I was to do this at home, I'd probably get maybe two or maybe four haddock fillets, do extra, and pop them into the freezer. And you can either cook them from frozen, or you can take them out, and you can pop them into um, the fridge and then defrost them. So just literally, the pan is getting nice and hot, and that's why I use rapeseed oil. First of all, you get a high smoke temperature. Secondly, it's produced in Ireland, which is fantastic, a win-win for Irish farmers and producers. And I really like the flavour of it, and this is from County Loud, Derry Karma rapeseed oil. Now I have extra breadcrumbs, if you can see that there. So I'll move this all out of the way. You can freeze that, absolutely no problem. Pan is uh, smoking. I'm gonna put a little bit of butter, that is a little bit, I promise you. And then I'm gonna move this out of the way, I'm gonna wash my hands. So just before I wash my hands, I'll just literally put the fish on. So if you can see the butter melting. So the rapeseed oil gives lovely flavor, but it also stops the butter from burning. So I don't want to crowd the pan too much. Okay. Yeah, I think we're good there. I feel a bit sad leaving that one on its own. So turn up the heat. Now wash the hands, you've touched raw fish. So again, the whole secret into this is really good fresh haddock. And what you do is, if you can bring it to room temperature, get your fishmonger to um, pin bone it, keep the skin on, and then get him to cut it. And that's roughly, what's that, nearly about an inch and a half, two inches. Um, you don't want them too big either for the actual uh, tacos. Now we need to be very careful, we don't want these to burn, but they cook so fast. So while they're on cooking, I'll flip them over in a moment. I'm going to show you a lovely tomato salsa. And I'm using tomatoes that are growing in Ireland, so I'll just give this here a little wipe. Okay, so, bowl here. These lovely, look at all these lovely little cherry tomatoes. They're gorgeous. And they're growing in Ireland, so they are. So this is a grower. So this is the Borbia quality mark here. So this is the Irish tomatoes and they're growing in County Waterford. So it just shows how far we have come with food, with uh, seafood. And I think, as I keep saying, we need to be eating a lot more seafood and haddock is so plentiful and delicious. Now I need to be really careful because if you find that it's cooking too fast, I have smaller rings here. So I don't want it to burn. That's one thing I don't want to do. So I'm just going to do a couple of these and then I'll flip them over and I'll show you, I'll show you the haddock. So these are the lovely cherry tomatoes. You have lots of lovely flavor. You have a uh, lovely texture and uh, they give a lovely freshness. Uh, I'll give another wee bit. I love these orange ones here. Now, back on to our lovely haddock. So I'm gonna to start to turn these over. I'm using the fish tongs. They are fragile, see the way? So just take your time. We're shallow frying. This technique is called shallow frying. So you can bake this off in the oven if you want to, but I think with the oil and the butter, you get so much flavor. That's gorgeous. If you look here, that's that beautiful color you're getting from the butter from the um, rapeseed oil and from the curry powder. And, and, and that's what will work so well. So I'll just move it over here beside me because that ring is slightly bigger, keeping it low. And it will cook because it's not a huge thick piece of um, haddock fillet. Okay, we're gonna dice a little bit of onion. I'm gonna show you the technique of dicing some red onion, which is nice and sweet. So you go three quarters to the end of the onion, curve your fingers, I'm using a big knife. And then we're gonna make two incisions. One, take your time. Never take your eyes off it. And I'm holding it all together like a little claw. And then we're dicing this really small. So I'm just gonna do half of this, should be more than enough. Cause I'm literally just gonna serve up one portion of this. Okay. And then that goes into the bowl with the tomatoes. Gorgeous. With that, we're going to put a little bit of lime zest and juice. So using my grater, a little bit of lime zest, or you can use the lemon, it doesn't matter. They're cooking up lovely, remember, oil and butter. Don't put too much, because if you put too much with the breadcrumbs, it'll just keep absorbing uh, more, more than you need. A little squeeze of the lemon, or the lime, should I say. That goes in there. And then we're gonna put in this lovely sweet chili sauce. So this is another Irish company. Okay, full on foods, and they're based on the Kerry Cork border. So roughly about a spoonful of that. Some lovely fresh basil and then a little bit of oil and salt and pepper so this is some fresh basil again look at these lovely plants behind me here so these can be grown by lots of lovely Irish producers you know for me as a chef it's really important that we always remind ourselves how hard fishermen work and they really do 
you know, to produce the most delicious fresh fish. We're an island, and one thing that I'd love to see is more people uh, eating, eating more fish. Now I'm gonna switch off the fish, so I am. The pan is off. Uh, I'm gonna put in some extra virgin olive oil, and a little bit of salt, and a wee bit of pepper. So I'm using another Irish sea uh, product, and this is some Oriel sea salt. So when, when, when I think about when I started cooking, how far we've come on, we always had beautiful fish, meat, all that lovely thing, dairy, but now we have our own produced oil, our beautiful sea salt. So this all is about supporting Irish, using local and seasonal, and that's what I wanna get across in my uh, videos and in my recipes. So that's our salsa, that will keep for three to four days in your fridge. The lime is important. It cuts through the sweetness, because the sweet chili sauce, you'll get a nice bit of a kick. Now, last thing we're gonna do, and then we're gonna serve up, is make a little bit of pesto mayonnaise. Uh, full fat mayonnaise, a couple of spoonfuls, and then we're gonna put in literally two spoonfuls of this nice fresh basil pesto. So you can see we've lots of interesting flavors here. You have lime, you have basil, you have pesto, you have curry, and it all works so well. Okay, let's just check on our fish, and I wanna show you, because people get nervous, how can you tell when fish is cooked? So I'll just pick one of these here. First of all, I wanna keep that one just for thing if you just go right into the center that's it cooked it's really really moist and haddock is a slightly flaky fish it's not strong it's a delicate flavor and it really is a beautiful beautiful um, fish so we're going to use these little wraps I just warm them up literally in the oven for a few minutes so but they are they are uh, cold at the moment so I'm going to just smear just with the back of the spoon okay our pesto mayonnaise then we're going to get our lovely tomatoes okay so we put this and then we're gonna arrange this. So we have our red onion, our sweet chili sauce. Actually, the longer you leave this, the better. So if you can even make this an hour or two before you're gonna eat it, oh my God. You'll be in food heaven. So next thing is our fish. I think this one here, because it's a beautiful color, see that there? Golden brown, beautiful. And then this here then, we're going to use this. And they are fragile, so just take your time when you're serving this up. Three is more than enough. And then the final thing I'm gonna do is a little bit of salad. And this is all growing just in our garden here. So we're lucky in the restaurant, we have a full-time gardener, Kevin's his name, but we have our own little selection of rocket, a little bit of uh, oak leaf, butterhead, those kind of things, maybe three to four mustard salad, and they can grow so easily. So I don't wanna cover because for me, I want to show off that beautiful haddock. That's gorgeous. And then just to finish it, a tiny little drizzle of some oil, and that's it ready. This is something that you can enjoy for lunch, for dinner, for supper, your kids will enjoy it. You know, fresh haddock, it's hard to beat. As I said, that's the full haddock. Get your fishmonger to fillet it, pin bone it, and then I've kept the skin on, you can remove that. Flour egg or breadcrumb. These um, kind of fish goujons you can make ahead and you can freeze, and they'll keep when they're crumbed in the fridge for about two or three days. So enjoy this curried haddock tacos with tomato salsa. Happy cooking and thank you very much.